Welcome. We are doing lightning talks now. So the way this is going to work is that we have six speakers, each of whom have five minutes to tell you their story. Uh, there are some technical challenges. We're going to try to move it along briskly. Uh, we'll try to take one question between each speaker while the other speaker comes up and gets ready to go. If there's time at the end, then we can do more questions for any of the speakers. Okay? Okay. First, first speakers, Nate and Peter. 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 Yeah. Thanks, Ned. Hey. Hey, hello everybody. Uh, we're going to talk about a new video X block for OpenEdX. So my name is Nate Ani. I'm, I'm with AppSembler, and this is Peter Koblikov. Peter from Raccoon Gang. So, what's the problem? Well, if you've used OpenEdX before, you probably noticed that the default is YouTube. The problem with YouTube is that your videos are not protected when you put them on YouTube. It's an advertising model, meaning that people can, even if it's unlisted, they can still get the URL, they can share that URL with their friends, and your, your IP is now in the public domain. The other problem is that the S3 videos, you can only have one, which means if you want to have one video that's optimized for mobile, another video optimized for desktop, you have to pick. So the video player can really only play one video. The other problem is if you use, let's say, Brightcove or Wistia, they'll give you a HTML embed code that you can drop in your, your OpenEdX site. But that, that video player is probably not um, <clears throat> compatible with the, the, uh, the, the built-in player. It doesn't have the same features. And you have these embed codes sprinkled all, th all throughout your, your OpenEdX site. So if if the API changes, you have to go through your entire course and replace all those embeds with something else. This is a problem that was affecting a lot of our customers. And so we put our heads together. We said, what can we do about this? And two of our customers stepped up to sponsor what we call a feature sponsorship model. So they're basically cost sharing the development of a new video X block. We got together with Raccoon Gang, who had some experience doing videos in OpenEdX. Um, so they were our development partner. And uh, we're going to show a short video of the functionality of the new video X block. So I'm going to hand over to Peter. Yeah, I, I will do some comments. So we can make an X block. Uh, we embed just the URL of the YouTube. It's simple. We have all the features uh, the X player has. Now we can just get the captions and transcripts from YouTube, interactive transcripts as well. <coughs> so the functionality is basically the same. We can put Vista, it will work like the same as YouTube. We can do that with Brightcov, with Vimeo. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> here is the doc. Uh, the Brightcov is the most cool one, I will tell you. Because we have uh, integration with 3Play Media, which is the place you can uh, handle your transcripts. Here, how we can embed it. You can see the transcripts appeared. And the most crucial thing is that we can now encrypt the video only in Brightcov. <coughs> which is very important for the corporate clients. Yeah. And basically, we can see that now video is encrypted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have another slide. Oh, yeah, we have one slide. Yeah, so like uh, very short, we have a support of YouTube, Vista, Vima, HTML5. We have a new feature with the integration of 3Play Media, which is like cool for integrate, like for corporate clients. 
we fetch all the features a video uh, in edX has, speed up, speed down, set start and time, accessibility features, interactive transcripts and captions, and handouts. So, how can you get involved? If you're a course creator, we have a demo site where you can play around with it, try it out. If you're a developer, the code is up on GitHub. We welcome patches and new features. If you would like to fund the development of other video hosting providers or new features, come talk to us. And lastly, we're having a birds of a feather today at 3 p.m. And there's a video uh, blog post if you want to get more information about it. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Regis. Um, let me just ask you one question. Where do you host your videos? I'll answer that for you. Perhaps you store them on YouTube. Perhaps you store them on uh, Vimeo uh, or elsewhere. I don't know. Well, I am here today to tell you one thing. Get your videos back and host them yourself. Really, it's not that hard. And then you're going to ask me, but why would I want to do that? YouTube works really well. Well, I have just one single reason to, to give you. It's a pretty big reason. Listen carefully. Video is a core component of online, edu of online education. You absolutely must get it right. Without video, you don't have online education. And if you get to the trouble of hosting your own uh, MOOC platform yourself, why not host your videos? Really, it's not that hard. Um, so really, you, you cannot compromise on video. What cannot you compromise on? Basic features. You can't compromise on multiple resolutions. You can't compromise on adjustable play speed, uh, clickable video transcripts. But more importantly, you cannot compromise on downloadable files for offline viewing. This is crucial to the learner experience so that they can view videos offline. And this is not possible on YouTube, as you know. You can't compromise on 100% accessibility. What does that mean? That means accessible all the time and for everyone, not just 80% of the world. I'm looking at you, China and YouTube and Dailymotion. And here I picked on China, but it's, it's also true for many countries. Okay, so at that point you might be thinking, th th this, is, this is going to be hard. Th I mean, hosting my own videos, I don't know how to do that. Well, I would like to tell you one thing. It's going to be fine. Get rid of YouTube, really. All you have to do is, is three simple things. Very easy. First, install VideoFront. This is a new project that, uh, it's a, a Django project, small, uh, about 3,000 lines of code um, that provides an API and where you can upload your videos. It's great, it's great. Then you have to plug to it with a custom X block called the VideoFront X block, which is also open source. Um, it's based on VideoJS. Video and the third thing that you must do is send me your credit card number. No, <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, everything is free, but it, it, it's actually, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually, uh, um, no, but uh, yeah, uh, seriously. So, video from how much does it cost? So, it's, it's a pretty important question. Um, in order to understand uh, what it costs, you have to understand what is video hosting. Video hosting is three things. First, it's storage on disk. Then it's transcoding to multiple resolutions that, that is CPU bound. And then you have streaming, which is delivering the videos to the users. This is related to bandwidth. The cost of the first two items is uh, a function of the number of videos. The cost of the third item is proportional to the number of users that you have. Okay, so how much is this going to cost you? Well, if you make a graph with uh, a number of videos and users, um, okay, so maybe you have a personal blog, it's, it's, it's here. You have few users, you, you have few videos. Uh, on the other hand is YouTube. YouTube has many users, many videos, very expensive. You don't want to be them. And then at the bottom right, uh, many videos, very few users, MySpace, I don't know. Um, but you, you are there at the top left corner. You have a uh, few videos because you're a MOOC platform, but you have many users. So the cost is not going, is not, it's not going to be that much. Let's uh, break this down uh, into numbers. Let's say you have a course with uh, 20 videos, um, uh, 10 minutes videos. Uh, you have 1,000 users that view all the videos every month. Uh, this is an assumption. Um, and then how much is this going to cost? So you can use two different backends, let's say. You can store everything on your own servers. This is what I call the local ba backend. Uh, so I, ma I, made the, uh, I made the math. It costs about 10 euros per month. So you will have all the slides on, on GitHub afterwards. Um, uh, so the 10 euros, this is per month per 1,000 users. I call that the gold plan. And then you could use uh, a backend on AWS. 
uh, with all the serv nice services that they provide. This is what I call the platinum backend. It's more expensive. This is, again, a price per thousand users per month per course. Um, and the great thing is that Videofront supports both of these backends. Actually, Videofront was developed so that you can use, you can create your own custom backend. So you can have a custom backend with the best of both worlds, and then you have a pricing that is dependent on uh, what you pick. I call that the double rainbow plan. Okay, but at, at that point you might be thinking, no, but hey, so, so seriously, a bandwidth. I'm a video provider, a bandwidth is going to be very expensive. Well, good news for you. Um, but perhaps, yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> uh, so uh, the required average bandwidth is 5.3 megabit per second, but today a server comes for free with 250 megabit per second. So this is great news. Will it scale, seriously? Uh, well. Uh, Videofront has been in production on FunMook. I don't know if you heard about FunMook. It has 1 million users, 300 courses. Uh, Videofront has been running for eight months and it's been running great. That's all I got. Thank you very much. Migrate your videos today. Get in touch. I'm Regis. Okay, Regis, help him out. Uh, figure it out. Um, just so Regis mentioned it, but all of these slides, everything's being videoed and all the slides are going to be made available afterwards. So you don't have to try and capture these things as we just flies by them on the screen. So thank you very much. I'm going to do this lighting talk in Spanish. No, no, just kidding, just kidding. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the video. I'm not a developer. I'm the founder of IBL Studios, which is a course production company in New York. We also do OpenEdX deployment. And I'm going to talk how to film at a scale by using the latest uh, technologies. So last year we got a disengagement. We needed to produce two courses per month in all these subjects, introductory level courses, uh, 30 hours, 40 hours courses. And uh, the requirement was very clear. You need to produce all these courses. I need at least six to eight hours of video. You need to hire 25 uh, and plus professors from top schools. So I say, okay, how, how can we do this efficiently and in a manner way? So we say, well, the first thing, the very first thing, the real answer is no post-production. How many videographers in the room? Okay, you know what? You know the pain of post-production. Post-production takes time and time and time. So I say, okay, let's get rid of post-production forever. Let's produce everything in real time. Not a streaming, but in real time. So mixing cameras, uh, many cameras, laptops, uh, iPads, everything in real time. The second point was key. We needed to have a, always a top instructors. That means paying them well. And obviously, we needed to use all the very latest uh, technologies available in the, in the world. So we, we install a white uh, cyclorama. You know what I, an idea of what is a cyclorama? Well, it's a, it's a huge... Uh, infinite background. I will show some pictures here. Um, we needed to use a light board. Light board is like a writing in the glass. That's a, a nice piece of technology, especially uh, well for uh, STEM courses. And in terms of a green screen, uh, we wanted to use CNN style, the latest te technology, meaning avoiding that kind of a, a um, green glow that you see when you do green screen. So obviously a 4K, even if it's YouTube, you need to do 4K because the quality is much more better. iPad, we are, uh, I know that there are other te technologies, but we say, okay, iPad is, works very well, it works the best for the, for the kind of instructional design, and obviously audio is key. This is the, the cyclorama that I'm talking. It allows any professor to not only being stuck in a podium, but walk around the whole room. Eh? Because at the end, the way that you do teaching is this way. So this is the light board. Eh? Um, by the way, uh, anyone can install a light board. It's, it's open source. It's an open source technology. Uh, but you're going to need to have a lot of equipment and especially dedicated a studio for the light board. Because as you see, you need a black background. This is the control room. And from this control room, we are using all the all the studios. That was the white cyclorama, and the other one is the, the other studio with the, with the uh, light board. So 
you need to have a very well-coordinated team. People say, team, team, team. Yeah, always best uh, professors, instructional designers, videographers, and engineers, because at the end, it's not only creating the courses, you need to create an interactive experience. So this is a sort of a studio, that's a biology course, and that's the view of the professor. The professor is using the iPad, but at the same time, you know, following the notes, you need to create a situation in where all they feel extremely comfortable. This is one of the theme of the courses, and I wanna, I wanna show a couple of videos produced in real time. You say, oh, real time is low quality, it's a guy with a little camera, so, um, it requires, well, we put that, it requires a lot of pre-production. You don't have post-production, but you need a lot of pre-production. So maybe this one is the first one, or that is the second one? Well, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. So this is the intro, the intro to, the intro to a pre-calculus co course. Oh, we need the sound. So, so we have the professor talking in real time, and obviously with pre-recorded video, we are adding all these images. You may say, no, no way. This is post-production. You're kidding me. Believe me, this is all real-time production. So when you are producing at a scale massively, you need to produce in real time. Exactly the same way that the television business works. If you go American Go Talent, Go Talent or any other program, it works this way. So let's use, uh, if you want to do courses at a massive scale, delivering a couple of courses per month, you're going to need to do a live productions. And that's all. Sure. The, the question was, uh, if you want to try out the video XBlock on your own OpenEdX instance, how would you do that? So you download the video XBlock from GitHub, you install it in your local edX instance, and then for the course where you want to use a video XBlock, you would add it to the advanced modules. And then it will show up under the advanced, the, the little beaker icon. You'll see a new thing there called video. Hello, I'm Jeffrey Cross, and this is... Saigoto. We're from Tokyo Institute of Technology, and we'd like to tell you about um, Tokyo Tech X's TA training program utilizing online resources. So I know this is a video session. One of the uh, challenges with the video is how do you train people to make videos using online resources? So we'd like to talk about that. First, I'd like to introduce Tokyo Tech X. We joined EDX in October 2014. We've created three MOOCs. Um, our average MOOC development duration has been about 18 months for various reasons. We work with, we have a number of faculty, staff, and we work with about 25 TAs. Here's our MOOC production model. In this case, we have staff and faculty and a course instructor, and the TAs do most of the work. So on our fourth MOOC, which was on science and engineering ethics, we wanted to um, implement, t we developed TA training in order for us to speed up our MOOC making process. So this is a question like we wanted to answer throughout the MOOC making. Um, how do we train TAs effectively to develop a MOOC? So um, in order for us to answer this question, we divided the TA training topics into two, which was cre content creation and video production. So those two are the like, teaching methods that we use, um, online resources and then hands-on workshop. So you can see our uh, video studio here, or you could. Um, there's a, the professor and a TA um, in recording in the studio, and you can see our control room, and there's, there's the TAs there. So with online uh, content creation, we use online resources to train the TAs. Um, next, and then we created several SPOCs uh, to teach students, and then some of those TAs became TAs. So we use uh, SPOCs, and we taught the students how to create learning objectives content assessments, and we taught them how to use EDX Studio. Uh, we took materials from various sources, and we um, had an agreement with Stanford's, and we used their create, uh, creating effective online and uh, blended courses, and we also translated that into uh, Japanese. So as far as the hands-on workshop, what we did was we, um, again, uh, we, ha we invited a speaker uh, to give a, a workshop, in this case, it, the title of the workshop was From Ideation to Innovation, How to Create an Effective Online um, or an Online Course. And this is taught by uh, Stanford's Dr. Grace Liu. Uh, she's the Director of Digital Teaching and Learning at Stanford. 
So you can see several photos shown here on the right. Uh, this is during the workshop. We had a, uh, some of the TAs working on creating the online course, and on the bottom, uh, the TAs were actually presenting their ideas. In addition to Tokyo Tech, uh, Kyoto University and Osaka University also participated in our workshop. As far as video production, uh, when we got started with this several years ago, there wasn't a lot of online materials, so we used what was available. Uh, we had the, uh, the students actually create marketing and educational short videos. We looked at pre, the instruction was from pre to post production, and there's the Spock over there. And we used these materials, and then we supplemented that with uh, guest lectures. As far as the hands-on workshop, in this case, we had the learning objectives were for the uh, groups to actually create um, short videos and to work with experts uh, to acquire the video specialist skills. So the hands-on workshop consisted of three days, um, and we had a, a group from Hollywood come, and we had 25 participants, and then we gave the group that pre uh, prepared the best video an award. So um, we created our ethics MOOC in about like seven months, and then like we believe this was partially due to the TA training that we implemented um, through this MOOC, um, and then through also like through like this TA training, we have learned that um, customizing online resources like is like very important, and then also the having a group of TAs to complete the online training allows the MOOC team to share common language. And then also the last three um, practical opportunity in case of ours was hands-on workshop, um, boosted the TA's competency and also the motivation. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. So, hello one more time. I am from Russia, and uh, I don't know what I'm doing in the video section, but I want to share with you some experience about scaling proctoring exams. Uh, some background. We are speaking about National Platform of Open Education in Russia. There are uh, top nine universities, a uh, huge amount on students and courses, and this, the, the, right now this is the only one platform that can give you credits for your courses if they uh, passed in the proctoring mode. So we do need proctoring, and this year we have the aim to scale proctoring uh, students for 10th time than the last year. And there are some problems and solutions that we have found uh, on this path. First, uh, the students are often late for their proctoring exams, and they are trying to make to the to another time, and so on and so forth. So we have to create our own scheduled mechanisms, use it, it over multi-proctoring so solution that has been developed with our friends from Rakungan also, and uh, give the students ability to change the time even before an exam. And it worked, and it helped us really to scale the number of exams which is going in one time. Uh, the second problem is that the, we have very different courses from art, from mathematics, from physics, and from the different universities you have different uh, rules for the exams. On one exam you can use a calculator or a piece of paper, or on another exam you should uh, know everything from heart. So we need to add some additional info and parameters for each exam and each type of exam for proctors to understand what learner could do or what he couldn't do during the exam. Uh, from some universities, proctors, uh, professors don't trust proctors. They want to be proctors by themselves on some exam, so we have to give them ability to be as a proctor or proctorate exam or revise the proctoring exams by the representatives of the university. Uh, in this configuration, we have educational platform and its support, we have proctoring and its support, and we have university and its support. There are three groups of people, and uh, after a half of a year of uh, hard processes, we have said that we have to create some special regulations of how they should interact. We have created and, and the life became much more easier. Uh, and of course, cost efficiency push us to uh, create the mechanism to lowering the price of the proctoring because right now only real-time proctoring is affordable if you want to get credits. Not offline proctoring or synchronous, only online. So that is why our colleagues are trying to create some different solutions for cyber proctoring and so on and so forth. And uh, at least we manage. We have 
uh, multiply the number of students this year for 10 times than the last year. So that I want all that I want to share. Thank you very much. If you have a question about scaling proctoring, ask us or our friends from Macungan. Thank you. While we're switching laptops, any questions for any of the speakers? So far, none, no, okay. There we go. <clears throat> Good afternoon, I'm Vicente Goyanes. I'm the CEO of Teltec Video Research. We are a company focused on edtech solutions, especially on open uh, um, solutions for um, online uh, video to support teaching and, and learning. We have uh, customers uh, worldwide. And um, today, I would like to talk about, uh, well, this is the usual workflow. Um, you have to produce videos. Usually, you, you upload videos to YouTube, and then you publish videos on, on Open edX. This could be exhausting and unsecure many times. And uh, what if we can provide our professors a way to uh, manage their videos and even to produce their videos uh, inside Open edX? Well, our proposal is, uh, is uh, something like this. These are uh, the outcome of three open projects together, working together. One for uh, the recording, uh, the second one for the enrichment, and the third one for media management. Uh, the, uh, talking about recording, uh, the solution uh, is Gallicaster. It's called Gallicaster. Uh, this solution, what does is to record two, mm, two or more uh, synchronous streams, typically a separate video from professor and a separate video from, from the screen. Uh, this is just a software with a regular PC that you can play elsewhere. Somewhere you have the two screen recorded. It, it generates a touch interface, so professor in the classroom very easily can trigger the recording and manage it. You will have in your, you can have in your classroom something like this. You can also integrate it in on video conference rooms, in theaters. Uh, you can also build uh, recording studios based on this. There are many institutions uh, worldwide using this open uh, solution. Um, but I will also present a version of this embedded on Open edX. To enrich, the, this is based on Opencast, a project uh, at the time uh, led by UC Berkeley. It creates this user, user experience, it indexes the videos, it extracts text from the slides, but it can also recognize, for instance, QR codes on the slides. For instance, this slide will be uh, removed from, because it indicates that it's copyrighted material. Or this one can uh, sign a, a chapter mark so the video can be then uh, cut it automatically. To publish, we're using um, Pumukit. Pumukit is a YouTube-like thing, but also interacts with Moodle, Open edX, and so on. Many institutions are using this solution, for instance, UNED, uh, this uh, University of Cologne in Germany, others in UK, the United Nations. Uh, this is all uh, open source. To create this magic, you have to install a, a Pumukit bundle and a, an Open edX, um, X block. This will be the, you, you will also be able to uh, embed the YouTube videos, of course. And if you want to learn more, there are the, the URLs. And now I'll try to showcase you this user experience of the integration. So, here we are, we are in a studio. New green button here, videos coming from Pumukit. Here, just clicking it, this is the default video. It's an X block that is able to uh, videos you can uh, the, uh, you can uh, manage the video, but of course this is the default one. You can edit uh, the video here. Uh, you can uh, add the URL if you have it. You can also upload your videos right from here. Professor can manage his uh, library, but he can also record here his own video. Just uh, have to activate the camera, activate the screen sharing. For instance, this application, I will give it just, I will trigger recording. Now it's recording, hello, here I am. This is enough, just I stop recording. It uploads, uh, uplo uploads the thing, um, okay. And now I save, and if everything's wrong, here I have published it. On my unit, the new dual stream video. 
Uh, there it is. Uh, five minutes, it's great. <laughs> great. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Not only a five-minute lightning talk, but a live demo in a five-minute lightning talk. Okay. Thank you all for coming. We are out of time. I hope this was helpful. Um, we have birds of a feather sessions later on this afternoon, and this might be a good time to find these people and ask them more questions about what they've built. Thanks for coming.